Hi everyone, well, today we're back to paint a lovely little zebra um, that is very quick. We work through it quite quickly, so be prepared for today. That's your painting, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it, so come and join us. Right, let's start. The first thing I'm going to do, and we're going to use a pencil for this one, is I'm going to make a mark. The eye is the most important part of this picture. So let's do the eye first. And I'm going to make a mark around about the center of this canvas, uh, vertically, so portrait-wise, about the um, halfway mark in the canvas, and about a third of the canvas down. So it depends on what kind of canvas you've got. So I've got about this is 25 by 30 so if I take about a third of the way down I'm going to put a mark there that is going to be where my eye starts the eye socket starts and I'm going to draw a, a, a rectangle from there which is about an inch and a half across on my canvas I don't know about yours but that rectangle is where my eye socket is going to be and that is the most important point in this whole canvas. So once you've done that, then you measure the side of the face because we don't want to paint it. This is a black and white painting so we don't want to paint on the white actually. So from the side of the face I'm going to measure around about an inch across the top of the canvas and about two inches across the bottom of the canvas should be around there. I just know that that's going to be at an angle there and give myself a little bit of a line that joins those two points. So I have my eye socket and I have the side of the face. So I've, I've, I've set up where I want my zebra to start. So let's just start. I'm going to be using a round brush for this and as it's only black and white I'm going to load up the can, my, my paintbrush with black only and paint that black square or rectangle in the eye of my zebra. And now when you paint this you don't have to worry about how thick it is. You can go back and fill in all of the gaps later. I, I, we're going to work very quickly through the zebra and the reason I'm working very quickly through it is because the more the faster you work through things, the more you cover on the canvas, the bigger the picture gets and you can see the whole picture as opposed to concentrating on the details. So let's move on from there. Once you've got that rectangle painted in, I'm going to give myself an indication of where the eyeball goes in that. Now this rectangle might be a bit too wide, so I'm going to Wash that brush off, load it up with white. It's still fairly wet, so I'm going to get a grey effect at the end of the day when I do this. Now my rectangle's a little bit wide. I want to paint an eyeball in from the top left-hand side of that, that square rectangle. Bring it round and take it up to about the middle. Not even quite the middle. So I've got a round indication of where an eye is going to go. I'm going to leave it there for now because I'm going to fill in around this this eye socket now with black. Okay, wash that brush off, dry it off again and load it up with black. From here let's build up the eye socket. So from the eye socket, from the left hand side of the eye, I'm going to take the eye socket out a little bit and then bring it round in a bit of a curve following the curve of the eyeball to meet the bottom of this this square rectangle that we painted. Across the top of the eye giving him a, just a little bit of a hint of an eyebrow area we're going to take that brush and bring it round the top of the the rectangle and then swing it round and down and in and make it come down, pointing down to about the right-hand corner. 
but I'm going to take it only to there. So it's the same length or same height as his eye socket, as the, the original uh, rectangle we painted. And then the bottom of the eye, let's do this. So we're giving him the bottom of the eye of the eye socket. You take it out a little bit from the corner of that rectangle again, swing it round, down a little bit, not a lot, bring it up, and you bringing it down to meet that part of his eye. This line that you painted coming down. Now I'm going to fill that in. So I'm going to fill that in with black. So I basically painted his eye socket in here and his eyeball. We'll fill more of that in at a later stage. There we go. Take it down a little bit further, I think. And that's going down towards the bottom right hand corner of the canvas. From there, let's paint the side of his face. The side of his face so we know where we're painting his stripes up to. This side of his face is going to be falling off on the left hand side. It's going to be falling back. So the lines here will be a little bit thinner than lines across the middle of his, of his face. And I'm going to put a line that does that, comes down and in a little bit, and then maybe start another one about there and bring that down to the bottom of the canvas and following the line I made originally the pencil mark I made originally and it's a thinner line coming down the side of his face there from the corner of his eye socket here going up to the top of his head now we're going to start painting in the stripes and these go fairly quickly just remember we're not going to be painting over the white on the front of, of, of this part of the canvas we will paint some shadow in there but from here try not to paint too much black on the white area that we're leaving or drop anything you can always fix it but we need the white for the zebra stripes so I'm going to start a mark a stripe from the top of the canvas and I'm going to wobble it down into the corner of his eye like that. Make it a little bit thicker maybe. A little bit thicker than that line there. So that now is a tad thicker than that line. All of these lines are going to be thin on this side of the face. They're going to get thicker on that side. Let's do another one. Leaving a bit of a space I'm going to bring a line, a stripe down that doesn't quite meet his eye and does a little flick to the side, to the right hand side. There's another stripe there. And maybe I'm going to join that to another stripe that comes down to there. Now my stripes are wobbly. They're not equally wobbly on both sides. As long as you have an end to the stripe, you're doing well. All zebras have different stripes. Nothing in nature is is a carbon copy and nothing's perfect. So, well, everything's perfect. But not in perfect lines. Right, now my next line is going to be from here, from the top of the canvas down to around about just above the top of the eye. And I'm going to make this a, th a thicker mark. It's a thicker stripe. As we're moving from the side of his face over, with, over towards the middle of his nose, we're getting thicker. So that stripe will be about there. Let's put another stripe here. Now this stripe is going to be round and it's going to follow the line of the eye, but I'm going to take it off the nose area. This is the middle of the nose. So let's make sure that stripe goes off the middle of the nose. there and then let's make it thicker so the other side of that stripe will be as thick as that let's fill all of this in there we go and take that off the nose area another stripe let's do another one let's fill in the stripe across the middle of his nose here so that's goes fills in that top right hand corner of the canvas goes about halfway down in between these two so that we've still got a nice big gap here in this gap I'm going to paint another stripe and my stripe is going to follow those lines like that go off the edge of the nose 
and I've made that a bit thicker as well. And you can see not both sides of these stripes that I'm making, they're not equally wobbly, so you're not using the same angles to paint it in. You're just filling in um, a black stripe that'll be highlighted by the white next to it. I'm going to put a little bit of a line here, and to do that one, I've touched the brush on the canvas, pressed down hard, and then I bring the brush up and let it trail off. And that gives me a sharp point at the top, sharp point at the bottom. Let's do the one underneath the eye now. The one under the eye, it's following the same line as this. So I'm going to leave a bit of a gap and then following the same line as the eye, take it up like so and join my inner eye line. Like so. This is a bit thicker, so maybe what I'll do is I'll add a little bit of depth to this that line and then join it up again. That's got a bit of a thick depth to that, starting from underneath the eye, following the same angle. I'm going to put another stripe next to his eye here and wobble that down and then off the canvas here. So let's fill my stripes in a little bit, make them fatter. Got an average look of thick and thin stripe there. This one under this eye. Now this comes from the side of his eye, the side of his face actually, comes down and round. And I'm going to leave quite a bit of a gap. So that's coming down towards the middle of the canvas, I would say. But I'm going to swing it around a bit and then put a few wobbles in that. Take it up to there. The bottom of that, in fact, no, let's take it off the edge of the canvas, off his nose. I'm going to follow that line there and take it off his nose. There. Right, make this thicker. This is an accent point on his face, so I'm going to make this line a lot thicker. Maybe not the one going off his nose, but that one there thicker. And then I'm going to take this to show the side of his face here. We have a line coming down here, which is going to be the side of his face. We'll paint that in a different manner just now. But to indicate that there's definitely a side the side of his face here going off, bringing the stripes down and round, I'm going to bring that this stripe joining this block here down to the bottom of the canvas like that. Don't make it a flat straight line, you can wobble it. Let's just make that a bit smoother around there. Remember, your zebra will have different stripes from mine. Every zebra has different stripes, even though the stripes look fairly similar. There's no exact marking that you can say that your zebra will match mine. So it doesn't matter where you put your stripes. Let's fill in this bottom section of the canvas down here. I'm going to take it from around the middle. No, yeah, from around that section there. And I'm going to paint a thick stripe going down into his nose. So I'm covering the bottom right hand corner of the canvas like that. I've got quite a bit of a stripe in the middle, I mean an open white area in the middle, so I'm going to fill that in now. See where that line from the side of his face comes down? That is actually where the, the, the face follows down across the front of the nose. This face is coming round from the side and coming up and round. To indicate that, we're going to put a stripe in the middle here, following that same line down there, so from where that line, the imaginary line meets across the middle of this white patch here, I'm going to put a stripe coming down like that. And then swing it up and off and take it down to the middle in between that stripe there and this stripe on his nose there. 
and I'm going to make it a bit thicker. Let's make it thicker here. So I'm filling in more space, more white space. When you look at this when it's finished, you'll find that the white space is fairly even with the black space. And that's how you should keep it. So now I've painted in the nose of our zebra. You can see it's starting to come together. The side of his face, the lines on the side of his face are a lot thinner. They're going away into the distance. You're seeing them at an angle. So I'm going to put a thin line, a thin stripe coming down here and maybe trailing off under his, just under his eye there. Let's start it again maybe here, leaving a bit of a gap. And I'm going to have it trailing off the canvas down the bottom. Maybe I'm going to add a little bit of a an idea of difference there from all my other canvases. And once I've done that line there, let's paint another one from about there. And this follows the side of the face down here, thick and thin not perfect and another one in between those two there that side of the face is going off into the distance right all of your lines are basically in now what you have to do is just go and make sure that you're happy with how those lines look that there's not dry bits that there's not pieces sticking out that you don't like um, and then repaint over the top if you need to. While I wait for this eye socket to dry. I want that eye socket to dry so I can fill in the eye a little bit better. So now that my black is all painted, let's do some shadow. The shadow is a mix of the black and the white. So you take a bit of the black Mix it into your white mixing section and add a lot of white to that. A little bit of black goes a long way. I just want a pale grey to give me a shadow. When I have the pale grey, this side of the face is going to be painted in. So if I'm going to start from this one here, it is the biggest spot that I have. and I'm going to paint in a shadow grey there, following that line. So leave that side of the, the nose white. It's in the sunlight. This is the shadow. You don't have to touch the, the black on either side. I've left a gap in between. It's a shadow indication. I'm going to do a little bit of a shadow here. See, it's following the same line as that curve there from under his eye. Put a shadow there. And then let's fill in this bit here. Fill in a bit of gray here. And take that all off down to the bottom of the canvas. If your black's still wet and you pick up a little bit, don't worry. You can always paint over that later when it's all dry. Paint some more grey over it and you'll cover it all up. I'm going to paint a little bit of grey in this section here and carefully take it into these spaces that I have in between these lines here. Because this is my shadow area. Carefully put a little bit of grey in there. I think I need to take the grey up a little higher. So let's take that grey, the shadow, up to there. And maybe put some around the eye area. So I'm going to put some into this area around the eye. And slightly underneath. A little bit there. So I still have my line of grey coming in. A little bit of grey in there. And that's the brow, so I don't want to change anything on that brow. Now it's time to do a bit of his eye, highlight his eye a little bit more again. So I'm going to take white, wash that brush off, take plain white, 
and swing that eye around there, just making it whiter so that you can see it. When we painted it, the black was wet, so it became quite a grey line. I'd like that nice and white now. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can still blend a little, making grey, as long as you have an indication of the eyeball. The shine on the eye, the last thing that you will add, is the highlight underneath the eye socket. You have an eyebrow on that socket there. We don't want to paint on the black of that eyebrow. We want to paint just under that to give a shine on the eye. I've put plain white on my brush and the shine of my eye is going to be just underneath that brow area. So it highlights the ball of the eye. And we are done. Step away from your picture. Put it away from you. Have a look and see if there's anything you need to add. I can see that there's a few parts of the zebra I might have to make blacker. So if I, I'm going to wait for it to dry before I do that. Because painting now, it's still wet. It's going to take a lot of the paint off if I paint over the top of it. I'll wait till this is dry and then go back and paint black on my black lines again to make this more of a stark image, very much a dramatic image. When you're done, ladies and gentlemen, sign your work. Always be proud of your work. It's yours. So I'm going to sign mine here. Here we go. And we're done. I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time.